You went first, so you can go first. Yeah, it was, it was an honor. Uh, you know, just love being a part of a team. And, uh, you know, it's an honor to be given that privilege and, and uh, responsibility. And, uh, you know, we have the kind of team and coaches and culture that makes that kind of thing pretty easy for us to be able to step in just because it's, it's a well-oiled machine. It's running really well. And uh, players make things easy when they play great football like they did today. Yeah, just to echo what Jay said, I think it's, um, it, it was awesome. You know, it was awesome to have the opportunity. Um, I don't think we really, you know, we, we miss Coach Harbaugh without a doubt. You know, he's the, he's the one that runs the show. But um, the culture he's put here, placed within the coach, with the coaches, um, how we operate on game day doesn't really switch much. And um, obviously having Coach Moore back was huge. You know, uh, him being able to call the offense, his energy, you know, how smart of a coach he is. Um, so, you know, I have to say that too, that having Coach, coach Moore back made it a lot easier. Angelique? Mike, as the first African American head coach, what does that, what does that mean to you? You know, it's, um, it's a great honor. You know, um, I had a chance to play for Tony Dungy. Had a chance to play for, you know, Jim Caldwell. Um, my first coaching job was with Ron English um, at Eastern Michigan. Um, we have an athletic director and Ward Manuel is African American. Well, I've, you know, I've had a close relationships since he's been here. Um, so I just had a lot of great coaches who are African American that I'm, you know, I've had a chance to look up to. Um, and just really, you know, let me know that it can happen. It's a possibility. You know, and uh, hopefully we see more African American co coaches in college football. Um, you know, we, we need more, you know, and uh, so hopefully, you know, I'll be one of those one day. I will be one of those one day. And um, it's really just a great honor, you know. This is my university. I played here. This place changed my life. And um, to have that opportunity to always say I was the first African American head coach here is huge. Right, Chris. One for each of you, Jay. Can you just talk about the precision with which JJ's throwing the ball and how that makes it so much easier to move the offense when you can put it where you need him to put it? Yeah, I, I was on the wrong end of that for a lot of uh, spring ball and training camp, being with the defensive backs, and uh, you know he throws a high number of balls throughout a, a practice where it's like, man, yeah, we were in re really good position. There's there's nothing else you could have done there. So we saw this coming a little bit just in the way that, that those receivers and him were getting in sync throughout the preseason and it's been great to see so far. And then Mike, you're gonna have people questioning the running game again just because they didn't break off the long runs and stuff like that. Your assessment of the running game after two weeks and uh, today? You know, I, I think it's a, it's a growth. You know, we're, we're growing, we're getting better every week. Um, you know, if you break off two of those long runs, it's, you know, no one's saying that, right? And, um, but I just keep telling them we're one block away or one, you know, missed tackle away. Um, when we turn on the film, I think that's where we're going to see whether it's a, a receiver getting a block to the safety, whether it's a backside cutoff on the D line, whether it's a linebacker that we didn't go all the way up to, or it's the back making the wrong cut. I think that we have we're leaving a lot of yards out there in the field right now.